black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods, yeah. Sun is setting and the summer is coming to an end, but it is a subway night. We're getting subway. I had, well, it's actually right here. Let's, let's maybe bring you in for the real thing can. We switched it up, rotisserie chicken, but you know, craving something, needed it, and we're here. All right, like I said, had a mega subway crave that I just could not beat, so we're gonna unravel a mystery, even though I already told you it's a rotisserie <laughs> chicken sandwich. We're still unraveling a mystery, okay? Just pretend like it's a mystery. So he got it toasted and panini press grill, just my favorite way to do it, nice and crispy. The dude inside agreed with me on the move. And there it is, that rotisserie chicken in there, but she's loaded up with all our same fixings as per usual. Dripping that sweet onion sauce. <laughs> Extra tomatoes and whatnot, let's do it. All right, so my last Subway, I had a new way to Subway, which was cutting the sub into like tea, tea church sandwiches, tea sandwiches. And uh, this is another new way to Subway. I've never diapered with half the wrapper in my sandwich, but I feel like it's a, it's a move we're going for today because it is, this one's quite saucy. Uh, shout out my man inside. I love when the person in there is a good vibe. And he definitely was top tier. We had all kinds of sandwich discussions. <laughs> I noticed that Tim Hortons is selling like rice bowls and shit. And now Subway is selling uh, rice bowls. Right, you can put your protein, your rice, all this stuff. So we were talking about those. What he said when they first came in. Hmm. That he was talking mad shit on them, flapping them gums. But then he said he tried it, <laughs> and he, he loves them. So he was converted to the rice bowl. We appreciate his, we appreciate his honesty around here. So like I said, I got a crazy Subway crave. Almost went tuna. Made a game time decision at the last second to go rotisserie chicken because I know the internet hates tuna. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too dark in here. The sun is dropping down as we speak. And I'm loving the weather right now. The very slight beginnings of fall, just perfect. I'm sure all of you, not all of you, but some of you can relate to this, but. From time to time, when I get deep in the depressive moods, I kind of just, the reason why you find like a season of something to watch is generally to try to be interested in it, but also Just to have something to keep droning through and uh, it 
keep your brain just occupied enough to not think about all the horrendous shit that you could be thinking about. So I started watching the show on Netflix called The Order. which I was semi attracted to because it's about like secret society in this, in this university or whatever. But then it got way too magic-y and witchy and like in lichens and werewolves, which is a lichen and actual like uh, magic and spells and casting and that stuff. Though I did go deep enough in episodes that like I'm kind of invested but I know it's not really my jam of a show. I want it to be, I wanted the secret society to be less fantastical and more just like corrupt, sketchy shit. You know what I mean? Like secrets and mysteries that aren't so magical. <laughs> but uh, I did stop that to then switch to, just for a brief moment, The Devil in Ohio. All right, Baby Bonnet part two. So yeah, so I started The Devil in Ohio, which which I did have high hopes for, but it just didn't go anywhere very quickly. It just took like a long, long time to get anything really too established. And uh, it got a little hokey, a little teeny, a little PG. The acting got real bad near the end. But I did finish it. Personally, would not recommend. If you really value your time and you don't want to uh, waste a bunch of time on something that you think might be really good but isn't that good, that's one of those shows. But if you got, if you're just, you know, time to burn or maybe you're down sick or something like that. And you're into that shit, you might like it. I then watched after that the movie that was based on the true story of Michelle Knight and Amanda Berry. And Gina De Jesus, I believe, is her name. I've known about the story since back in the day, but there's a movie on it now on Netflix called Cleveland Abduction. Not a bad watch. The real life story of it is the same. That this dude was able to keep them captive for that long. With nobody finding out. having three of them in the house and then a child for like seven years and that child never left the house for seven years <laughs> I was beginning to question why she's never left the house. But 
But yeah, true, true story. Crazy. Pretty good movie to watch. And if y'all could see the sky right now. It is so sick right now. I just hate how... It never translates on the iPhone video. On the phone, it never looks even half as amazing as it truly looks for the naked eye right now. It's so crazy. I'm going to try and show you one more time. But over here, wow. Sick. Look at that. In real life, this is like a deeper purpley red color. I don't know, crazy.